it is your boy eric aka young god coming to you live in the orange dungeon today giving it to you real raw rugged and i have a very very unique and special guest on the other line i'll let him introduce himself who do we have here today so you have this way of introducing your show where you say please tell me about yourself i think you ought to tell me why you're having me on your show i've watched your channel it's amazingly black american it's got some pretty outrageous stuff and you're a journalist a young journalist and i admire you but why are you asking me i'm very intrigued into just documenting behaviors in life i'm a psychology major so that's something that's always intrigued me i'm very into like sociology and why people are the way they are and i think your channel and just your background that i've studied and did research on you've done a lot of that i've been a filmmaker for 61 years i've been a documentarian but my personal history is relevant to what we're going to talk about i grew up in a pro civil rights long island working class family we we supported the brooklyn dodgers because my dad believed in jackie robinson and we were going to support them the hell of white waller uh, my first protest 16 years old was the Woolworths. The Woolworths was taking money from black uh, customers, but they couldn't work there. So me and a bunch of other high school kids picketed. We were watching Martin Luther King, really affected by that, really affected by 1957. Life magazine shows a white cop in the South with a dog biting a black guy's ass. Sickened mm. me. It makes me upset now when I think about how disgusting that was. That's America. That's what's happening. And uh, I made a lot of films on that subject with a lot of different people I interviewed, some of them very popular on my YouTube channel because they're presenting ordinary citizens who experienced the 1950s and 1940s and the early 1960s. And then you pop up as you ask me these, like, would you like to do an interview with me? So I look at your channel. Keep a man happy in a relationship. You gotta be wifey. Gotta be wifey. Yeah, yeah, be wifey. You gotta know a lot. Yeah, you gotta be able to deal with him too. And like, know that he growing up. Yeah, shit. it takes maturity. A lot of people try to hop into relationships and they're too young, trying to do too much. So that's the first thing, y'all both have to be mature. If y'all not there, then y'all can't even think about the stuff that y'all trying to do or go to or whatever like that. So. You said be wifey, what does that mean? Like basically, not doing what he want basically, but what a wife should do. Cook for him, clean for him sometimes, you know, y'all go on dates. You may have a man. I don't know why so much of what you're doing as a young journalist, and you're good at it, is American African. Why is that so important to you? So I guess, I guess we have to go back to just my childhood. I grew up in a very black family, grandparents, uh, dealt with the Black Panthers. So coming from that type of background, I went to an all black elementary school. I uh, just was surrounded by a lot of black people. Just that's just uh, by by chance. Like I really didn't have a lot of white people around me until middle school. That's really when I started going to school with white people. And I think that the way that black culture is documented in a lot of ways in today's society, I think is irresponsible and is not is not well represented. So I like to try to document it the best I can in the most appropriate, entertaining, and just accurate way because there are crazy things that happen in every culture. What am I about to see right now? <laughs> You're about to see me getting it from the back because that's my favorite. Okay. I feel like that's the one I look the best. I have a lot. She's scrolling through her. Uh... <laughs> yes, it is this one. Okay. <laughs> it's this one. Okay. <laughs> wow. I just grew up within black culture, listening to hip hop, listening to, to R&B, watching black TV shows and stuff like that. And yeah, that's just kind of how that went. Do you feel that your culture is not represented today? Or do you feel it's overrepresented? How do you feel about the culture that you grew up in and your culture today and your focus on YouTube? I try to show all aspects of uh, just life. Cause me and Eric just got that chemistry. Of course, of course. Um, speaking of chemistry, you're always such a beautiful soul to me. Like, I really oh, appreciate it. You're always you. a very nice person to me. But with that said, I've learned that you have a switch. Yeah. You've never turned it on me, but I've seen you turn it on other people. 
and it's a very different switch from the Camille that I get. <laughs> yeah. Where does that come from? Because it is when it's on. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little frightening. Anger. And it's a lot of anger. This don't make me mad. But where does that? It's not like a regular anger. When you get angry, you're. I'm really pissed. I'm livid. Like. Does that come from like anger that's just already been stored and you don't really let it out that much so when it comes out, it's out type of thing? That's the anger that everybody calls black women anger. Uh, that bullshit. If I was to go to a a Irish uh, pride event or something like that and I was to do a video and every Irish person would be like, this is disgusting. This is not a good representation of who we are. I would feel bad because like, oh no, that's not what I want to do. That's the, the, the reason that I'm doing this to make sure that I'm giving accurate depictions of these subcultures. Your YouTube channel is very colorful. The rap and hip hop that you review, you're just a plain good reviewer, I think. Your interviews with prostitutes and other outrageously good looking and outrageously sexual females. And I had never done anything like prostitution before. I had never done anything like this in my life. And all this, like, I for like six months, I didn't have a job. My rent was like $1,300 a month. Well, Eric, he has no prejudices. He doesn't judge anyone. He's just trying to find out. He's like a curious guy trying to find out about these one magnificent looking females that are around you. Could you stay with a guy in a relationship if his sex wasn't up to par? No. But, well, yeah. Because if I'm, if I'm in love, then yeah. But if it's like at first and it's trash, I don't know. Because to me, sex is kind of important. I really found those interviews fascinating because you just let things be spoken that aren't ordinarily spoken anywhere there's two reasons i start to have more uh i guess either if they're porn stars or they're strippers or they're people like that on my channel there's two reasons one i realized that i have a lot of men that subscribe to me and men love women so it's like all right that's a no-brainer let's probably get more women on here because men want to see women so i was like that's a no-brainer but really the the bigger reason was these subcultures of people that i don't feel like have great voices so women i i really i was raised by my, my mom single mom um and i have a great deal of respect for women like never want to disrespect a woman never put my hands on women in a very respectful towards women and i always thought that women need a platform to just let them speak freely i wanted my platform to be like hey you got something in your brain you got something in your brain let it be spoken and people that are working like a sex worker industry whether it be a porn star or stripper i feel like men usually objectify them and they see them in a certain way where it's like oh, it's a piece of meat almost it's like they don't look at them as people so i kind of want to almost as bad as it sounds humanize them or yeah people can twist the things i say and make me look even stupider than i already do <laughs> that's not what i'm doing here obviously. no but i know i know i know i just like to be careful on interviews and then like right now i've let myself view myself too much that no. i'm gonna look at this interview no. and i'm gonna be like oh my god you look so dumb already you have like a you know kind of like a defense mechanism like kind of like a guard set up because you don't want people to get past that guard because when people get past that guard they seem to like tamper your heart and mess with your feelings right I agree with you completely about the way to treat females. I was raised by a dominant female mother. I'm not afraid of women. Seems like a lot of guys are black, white, and middle <laughs> afraid. <laughs> you and I are not that way. We don't feel that way. But I invite you, because I really respect what you're trying to do and the attitude you're taking talk toward it and the way you use YouTube. Um, I'd invite you to ask me a question. What is your mind about that you'd like David Hoffman to talk to your audience about? What made you so interested in in covering these these towns and and starting there? Like, what made you started covering these towns and interviewing these people? With, and if you're in Tennessee or wherever you were, like, what made you start doing that? I was really curious, always curious, curiosity for everybody else's experience, but mine. So right from the start, I began asking questions, and I wasn't just asking questions. I was genuinely curious. When I speak to you. I'm genuinely curious. I'm trying to, who is this guy? You're wearing an African hat? Okay, that's your choice. I'm wearing an ordinary people hat because that's my choice. <laughs> um, but I can't fully get you, so I'm curious. I want to ask you something really hard, something I've never asked anybody, and I'm not kidding, but I'm curious. There are people that I know and I understand who would be seen by black people as racist 
but they are not racist. It's not about color. It's about culture. Now, there are white people that I get on my channel all the time who object to cultural things about black inner city, certain cultures that you know very well. You interview them. I think females love hood niggas so much. Because they dumb as fuck. That's all I got to say. Females are like hood niggas dumb as shit. Like, why the fuck would you want to date a nigga that's capable of going to jail or dying while y'all dating? Like, hey, these, these hoes don't got no morals, man. You feel me? Like, they just be on some other shit. That's why you got to slap their ass. They really, think, they really think all hood niggas got money, and they really don't. That shit. Hey. Hoes see a Glock and think a nigga on that for real. And hoes be liking these hood ass niggas. Knowing damn well that nigga gonna be locked up or dead in about two that fucking shit. years. So, the reason why hoes like hood niggas. Because they like weed salesmen. Because they dumb as fuck. Why do girls love guys from the hood so much? Bad boys. I don't. Get that shit out of here. Oh, get that shit out of here. What? I'm into like a good guy, but I think that women, they like the thrill and they like that southern charm. A lot of hood dudes have that about them, you know? They like real southern, so. Some females don't need that respect. What type of women don't need respect? Little, I mean, little, little, little Thotianas, the little, little, little Thotties, you know what I mean? The little eggs and biscuits. But you, wanna, I you, thought, wanna, you wanna call out a specific name? Cause it's like you're talking about somebody. Oh, oh, oh yeah, Call somebody up. A, a name? Yeah. Okay. I won't say last name, but Ariana? Uh -huh. just, just, just know, baby. Yeah, I, I heard about you, Sheldon. I heard about you. This is not about you're black, so I don't like you. You're black, so you're stupider than me. You're black, so you're threatening to me. This is about, I don't like the way women are treated in the rap culture, it appears, based on the songs, I don't like that. I don't know, because these niggas are resourceful. Like, when they ain't got nothing, they gonna figure it out. Like, if you don't got a condom, you gonna use a sandwich bag and some lunch meat to fill it in. If you ain't got no gas money, you gonna scrape up or just walk or steal another nigga ride. I just think that certain things just won't be understood by certain people. And there's all certain things that people don't care to understand, because I've met a lot of people who had feelings towards somebody, not because they're racist, because of things they've heard about them or just things they see on the surface. Then they got to know the person like, oh, this is a, this is a cool guy. This, this is a cool girl or whatever. So I think a lot of things where it comes to black culture that may be seen as negative, um, it's just you people may see things on the surface and like, oh, I don't like that. But if you're not interested in something, why would you take time to, you know, go and look at it? So I get why they don't don't do it, because they already have this um, negative perception. I'm curious what you think about that, Dave. I've never been in the rap culture, but I am prejudiced in that I believe that if I did the same thing, now you're going to make, maybe tell me I'm wrong. And I entered the culture, I said, here's me. Who are you? That isn't what would come at me. There's a rapper, uh, this dude named Vince Staples, and he has this really interesting video um, where in the video, He's showing a whole bunch of just like gang bangers and dudes with guns. And it's like uh, a lot of just like gang violence. There's a lot of very just uh, negative images in the video. And at the very end of the video, it's like a Mexican gang banger with tattoos all over his face. And it starts to like, it's very close up on his face. It's a, it's a, it's a very close up shot. And then it starts to zoom out, zoom out at the very end of the video. And then you see a glass. And in front of that glass, it's a white family looking through the glass, almost like a museum. It's like, oh, look at the game banger, look at that. So when you say that you will go and you feel like you won't get accepted, I think the only way that somebody that's from, you know, outside of the culture won't get accepted is if that they feel like they're being treated like they're at the zoo or they're at the museum. And a lot of black people have felt that, so they don't feel comfortable with that type of, I guess, coverage of them. But outside of that, you will definitely be accepted because for I've like, I, I'm from the South. This is not a black thing. This is just a Southern thing. Southern people, you have that Southern hospitality. So there's a yes, ma'am, yes, sir. And a lot of the biggest hip hop coming out right now is from the South. So you're gonna get the yes, ma'am, the yes, sir. Black people love to cook for you and they love to give you food. And the biggest people in rap media right now are white. The biggest people, yes, dude named DJ Vlad and a guy named Adam22. DJ Vlad is a Russian, Vladimir, that's his real name. And literally some of the biggest um, media people and all the rappers will sometimes go to them before they'll go to a black media outlet. I, I think that if you did a documentary, you did something on hip hop, 
you would be oh, you'd be welcome with the open arms for sure because you're great at what you do and they're also they're artists they respect other artists and other talented people so yeah they'll definitely respect you for sure answer me the question of where you're headed what is your career path how are you going to get there what would you like i was in 11th grade i went to a concert my first ever concert it's it's these rappers from florida i was like all right sure i'll go it's around my birthday so i go and i wore this shirt that my friend had made and it was a shirt with a animated picture of a rapper who was in jail and it said free gucci the guy name was gucci man so i was like this is a cool looking shirt i'll wear it so we're backstage meeting the rappers and one of the rappers he says yo that shirt is like really cool can i buy it off of you i'm like no i'm, I'm not gonna take my shirt off right now and just give it to you but uh my friend who makes the shirt he's at the concert let me go and get him so i ran to go get nate shout out to nate and I say, hey, Nate, uh, this guy wants a shirt. Do you have any? And he was like, oh, no, I don't have any. They're all at my house. So the rapper says, hey, this guy, the rapper name is Wi-Fi's Funeral. He says, hey, can I like go in the car with you and get it? Like, I'll ride to your, your house. So he hops in the car with us. This is our first time ever meeting anybody's famous. So we're kind of like, yo, this guy is kind of famous. Like, this is kind of crazy. So we're in a car with him, and we stop at a gas station. And he's talking to us like, hey, so what do you do? What do you do? And I, I think I just lied. I think I was like, oh, I don't do interviews. So he was like, really? He was like, you want to interview me? And I was like, yeah, that's what I do. Of course, never did an interview in my life. But people gave me a good response. Like, oh, yeah, that was, like you should do this more often. So I'm like, OK, cool. So that was 2016, I think my first interview was. So I'm like 300 interviews in. And I'm kind of just seeing where this takes me. And I'm doing psychology, which I feel like makes me a better interviewer because I can understand the human brain better. I feel like conversing with people and learning sociology helps you understand why people the way they are. And it helps me converse with individuals better. Well, that's quite wonderful the way you put yourself, but I got an old man suggestion for you, pal. A, begin to see yourself as headed somewhere. It's not nowhere. It's not, we'll see what happens. You got to carry this fascination and skill and ability to talk and easygoing manner. I'm not saying you're easygoing because that I don't know, but manner that I chose to talk with, you got to really carry that to the edge. That's what I've learned from my early mentors. If you are headed in a little bit, use the universe to say, well, what's it, where is it driving me? At 22, you're beginning to say, where am I going to be at 27? You can't really see, but I'm going to drive. I'm going to go as good as I can. I'm going to get better and better and better. That's suggestions from David to you. But I want to let you know that I really appreciate doing this with you. And I do and did when I first saw it, admire your basic capability, which you'll see where it goes. And I say, I ought to go there. It seems right to me. Anyway, I want to thank you for this, Eric. All, all shout out to you. I, I appreciate it. Um, and I, I enjoyed this a lot. Mm -hmm. I was hoping that you would. And uh, I appreciate it too. I'll hope that this thing gets you some noise in my space. And I'll hope that some of your folks say, hey, I like that guy and see my space as well. Take care, Eric. I stand outside. I stand in. I might just stand in. Nigga, do you want to talk? Yabba, yabba, do, yabba, yabba, do.